What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, we're going to be breaking down what's going on with Neo stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to talk about SPY, Tesla, and the QQQ, and break down the technicals, talk about the news affecting Neo, what's going on with the option chain for SPY, and what's going on with the overall data affecting the markets. Before I break anything down about tomorrow and talk about what's happening with Neo from a technical standpoint and also based off the data, let me just mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Neo community as a whole. And finally, don't forget about the Mumu link. The offer ends very soon. Put in 100 bucks and you're guaranteed 5 free stocks with a $100 cash reward. Now, anyways, what's going on with the news? Well, we're getting some good news from Morgan Stanley. They're saying to buy Neo. They're saying Neo is doing very well. And they're very excited about the price cuts that Neo just announced. They believe that NEO is going to see more sales because of this, and we're going, we're going to see potentially even more revenue because of it. They also said that they're going to keep NEO in their buy rating uh, like envelope, and they're very excited about what's going to happen to the company. More investors, and especially large ones, are incentivized to buy into NEO. More retail are now putting their eyes on it, and more people are starting to FOMO buy as we're starting to see price targets increasing from $8 to $10. Barclays just said... Uh, let me actually see their rating should be up here. They they basically said just a couple of days ago that instead of $8, Neo is going to be breaking $10 very soon. And we're very close to doing that. That's been a good sign. That's helped Neo pump even more as buyers are continuing to step in. Additionally, the price price ratio is increasing. Neo is getting stronger every day. And we're starting to see Neo get more wins. Neo is green 53% of the time on Fridays historically. June tends to be a decent month, not such a great month for Neo. July tends to be a little bit better. And overall, the future is bright for this company. We are seeing this decline in the overall short interest. That's a good sign because shorts are continuing to cover. I also want to add that Bullard and Waller from the Fed are going to be speaking for tomorrow in the morning. But Waller is going to be coming uh, closer to market open about an hour and 45 before the market opens. And then tomorrow at about... 10 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. Yeah, I think 10 o'clock actually, uh, a.m. Eastern time, 30 minutes after the market opens, we have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out. When this comes out, it's going to cause the market to move most likely. And we will see how this actually affects it because you have to remember we have OPEX tomorrow too, lots of options expirations. We have just under 2 million calls expiring. and We have just under uh, 3.7 million puts expiring. A 1.91 put to call ratio, the majority of individuals have puts and institutions, and the market makers are incentivized to hold the market up. Neo has seen a declining short interest and a declining short volume relative to price. And finally, the volume on Neo is still very strong at 96 million, almost in the 100 million mark. So overall, it's looking very, very nice. But here's what you have to watch for. Now, because it's options expiration day tomorrow, we have millions of them expiring at once it's very hard to predict how this is going to end up moving however if neo tries to pump more as there's not really a sign of this thing slowing down there's a possible bull flag developing but there's no confirmation yet because things could change in a flash like if you look at spy this thing was looking weaker in the pre-market it looked like it was about to start you know turning to the downside and instead it ended up doing the exact opposite. This thing ended up holding up very, very nicely and it ended up pumping as soon as the market opened. Now, I wasn't even expecting that. That was just pretty surprising when you look at the data. So I have my chart right here. And as it continued to pump, there is technically a bearish divergence that's developing, but there's no sign of the market truly getting a big rejection. Market is still holding up above the 442 support. And overall, the market still looks strong. So as a result of this, there's no confirmation of NEO or the market like churning. And we're going to have to wait and see how this reacts to this. Now, as far as NEO goes, I want to add something very important. NEO has been holding up nicely, but we have these resistance zones. I just wanted to mention that's why I'm on this side of the chart. Uh, there's actually this imbalance. I actually saw one very close to this level right here in the 10.4s if it does break 10. So that's going to act as a magnet. And then 10.06 also has another one. So there's some magnets for neo if it does manage to break out and besides that i usually just use historical data to break down both support and resistance levels and we're going to use that to figure out where this thing could end up going to but anyways going back to the modern day of neo whoops right here so neo got this nice pump and is continuing to push to the upside we had this nice cup and handle like formation and overall there's no true sign of major weakness on the chart if we're bullish on neo 
right? Just like how the market's continuing to push. $10 to 10.06 is going to be resistance. If it breaks this, the next very important level is going to be 10.25 and then 10.4 in that zone because we have an imbalance that's going to attract if it breaks above 10.25. If it breaks 10.4, watch 10.66. That's another imbalance. And then $11 after that. If it breaks down, we're going to be watching support at 9.75, which is not that strong. The stronger one is going to be 9.5. And then we have 9.21 being support because this is where the previous resistance level was. Then the 50 EMA is at 9.06. So overall, there's no true sign of weakness. It depends on the market. Uh, if it does reject off $10, it could cool off first and then try to go. But I don't really want to, I don't really know at this point because so far the market is still holding up nicely and there's no true sign of weakness. And we, we're going to find out in the pre-market, but for now it's holding up quite nicely. Now, Overall, the trend is still strong. There's a good chance it's going to try to test $10, but I don't know if it's going to get rejected or not. It's going to depend on the market, and we have lots of options expiring. So we'll see if the shorts try to double down or try to fight. For SPY, if it's bullish, it has the potential to break above this 443.75 resistance. If it breaks that, it's going to see 445, 446.25, 447, and then potentially 450. If it holds above 445, there's a high probability it's just going to get closer to 450, by the way. That's going to be a big important level to look out for. It managed to break above 442, which is major resistance, and the market is still looking primed. If it does cool down, because there's no signal of it truly cooling down just yet, there's a slight drop at the end, but nothing too major. If it cools down, you're going to be watching support at 440. If that fails, 438 and 437, which is where we have the 50 EMA. Then we have 436.64 to 436.25, followed by 4. Six, I'm sorry, four, three, five. After that, now overall, market's holding up. There's no true sign of a break in the trend, so it's still favoring the bulls. I don't really have enough data to, you know, call out this, you know, dropping just yet. There is a bearish divergence on the one-hour time from this developing, but there's no sign of it playing out yet, and we just have to be patient and watch these levels. For Tesla, it's very tight, right? It, it's fighting resistance around the five. I'm sorry, the 257.75 zone, and then support is going to be around 255. I'm watching this carefully on the 30 minute time frame specifically, and you can see it was holding above the 50 for the majority of the day. We're going to be watching 255. If it breaks below that, watch support at 254, 252.5, and then 250, which is going to be major support. If that breaks, there is this imbalance way down here, which could it could come down to that all the way down to 247.5. And if that fails us, it's going to drop even lower. But if Tesla manages to bounce and it tries to push up to 257.5, it's going to you know, continue to push up to this 260 or, or get very close to doing so. If it breaks 260, that's going to be bullish. But for now, we're kind of stuck. It is looking a little bit weak, though, as Tesla has been establishing a lower high and the market was pumping, yet Tesla slowed down and didn't really be able to do so. It's going to likely cool off during the pre-market, but things could change intraday. But for now, the odds do favor it making its way closer to just chopping in this area and maybe dropping a little bit. But like I said before, things could change tomorrow. It's going to be a new day. But that's that's what the technicals are telling us. On the triple Q, it's losing some momentum, but overall it's holding up quite nicely above this 370 support. If it manages to hold this, it has potential to push up all the way up to 372.5. If it breaks down, we're going to be watching 368 and 366.39, which is where the 50 EMA happens to be. Now, for now, there's no true sign of weakness. The QQQ is kind of in the middle for the time being and it's still making higher highs and higher lows. Without any confirmation of weakness, we can't truly turn into bears just yet on this. For that reason, we're just going to have to wait and see where it goes tomorrow because of the OPEX expirations. And we have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out 30 minutes after the market opens. And we're going to get a big reaction to that, which could change directions of the market. But anyways, for NEO, we're basically stuck in the middle. The trend is still more bullish. So there's a good chance it's going to try to test this $10 level. It could even break it and get closer to 10.2 plus, uh, 10.25 or so. But for now... We'll see how it tries to open. It's getting very close to getting a bearish cross in the 30 minutes, so it might gap down tomorrow morning, but things could change if it tries to bounce. Watch support and resistance, and for now, no, there's a lot of options expiring. Uh, the trend is still strong. There's no confirmation of it breaking down, so there's a good chance it's going to try to test $10. But we'll have to wait and see what happens to the market tomorrow because things could change, and the bears could become very cunning and try to find some kind of news to try to hurt the markets. That's their plan, but so far there's no confirmation we'll see what happens tomorrow that's why you have to watch support and resistance the trend is still favoring the bulls a bit more as we're continuing to trend upwards but like i said before 
Tomorrow is Friday. It's going to be the last day before a long weekend as the market is going to be closed on Monday. That's why it's very important to just be patient and then watch support and resistance. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. The last thing I want to say is I have some merch if you're interested in buying anything. If not, that's completely fine with me. I really appreciate all of you guys. Have an absolutely spectacular rest of the day. Neo to the moon alongside the whole market as the long term is very bright. And peace out.